haven't asked Carver, but I think he is uh, closed probably as 30 conferences of mine over the years by now, something like that. And um, they're always mesmerizing and wonderful um, final words. And uh, so I, Carver Mead, uh, Kyoto Prize winner, um, and uh, great thinker and cosmic man. <laughs> oh, thanks, George. Well, this cosm has been really different. Uh, we've tackled the big questions. And um, as I look back on my own experience, uh, I got interested in the VLSI technology because I could see that with it, you could make information technology available to every person on the globe. And uh, at that time, uh, there was a consent decree in force in the United States that IBM had the right to all computing, and AT&T had the right to all communication, and that they must not overlap with each other. Uh, so that was the Supreme Court of our country. If you took that literally, we could never have cell phones. But somehow, we developed a technology that found its way all the way up to the allocation of spectrum all over the world. That's astounding. How in the world could that happen? Well, in 1971, uh, as you heard last night, I taught my first VLSI class, and uh, Caltech had a little, still has a little magazine that they publish, and they came around and said, well, why are you doing this? So I had an interview with them, which you can read, it's still on the web, and it was called Computers That Put the Power Where It Belongs. And what I said to them is, this technology has the capability of putting into the hands of every person in the world extraordinarily power digital technology. And that power is a decentralizing power. It can't be controlled. It can't be stolen. It can't be put in prison. You can try, but it won't work. So as I've listened to all of the problems we have, which are manifest, uh, we have problems in the world of dictators taking control. We have a, a system of free information now which allows our adversaries to put us at odds with each other. That's the one thing that can cripple us, is when we get at odds with each other. This cosm has been a wonderful example of us arguing over things not because we have a fixed idea and we don't want to change because of some preconceived notion, but because we want to get to the truth. I was extraordinarily pleased to think about in the midst of all this challenge we have ahead of us, what can one person do that will actually outrun 
the forces of control and dumbing down of society? And the answer is, one person can do a lot. I put my life into making available to every human being a powerful technology, knowing quite well that it would be used to try to control people. But historically, we live in an age of abundance. And that abundance is not just about bread and cheese and those things. That abundance is about opportunity. I was pleased today that Steve Coonan, one of my former colleagues at Caltech, has put his whole life on the line to make clear what the facts are around energy and climate. It's a heroic thing he's doing. One human being is already making a difference. You can see it in the fact that there are things you can talk about now with regard to climate that you couldn't say a few years ago. So I would urge you, each of you, to look at the challenges we have. And there are many and they're mighty. But one person can do a lot. So do your part.